Hey guys, it's your girl so fine. Welcome back to my channel. Um, if this is your first time here, welcome. This is your first official welcome here. Feel free to give me a thumbs up if you like anything that I'm saying or any kind of this content. You can even subscribe if you're up to my second, third, or fourth video. I mean, at this point, you might as well subscribe. So, for those of you who do know, um, as you can tell, we're in a different setting. I'm currently at work. I'm at my school. And um, for those of you who do not know, I'm... Uh, occupational therapist so that is my nine-to-five job I'm an occupational therapist and of course by the setting you can tell it's in a school with kids pediatric occupational therapist so I'm school-based um, those of you who do not know occupational therapy occupational therapy is a practice in which we deal with individuals throughout the whole lifespan so I can work with preemie babies I can work with um, toddlers children adolescents adults senior citizens all of the above like I can from life to death um, in this setting it's a little bit different because it's more academic based it's not completely as medical as it would if I was in a hospital setting I'll be putting a lot more of my sciences into practice but here in school I'll be doing a lot of um, behavioral a lot of academic fine motor writing um, learning a lot of like modeling a lot of those kind of theories for occupational therapists but I didn't come on here to talk about theories and learning styles. I came to show you guys my occupational therapy practice bag. This is my bag. This was actually a graduation gift from my best friend. So I just wanted to show you guys what is in my bag and what I do on a daily basis. Well, I won't be able to tell you guys, I mean show you guys, but I'll be able to tell you. Like this is what I have in my bag, this is what I use it for. Um, and just the purpose of different things for school-based occupational therapists. All right, so let's open up this bag and see. All right, so first and foremost, I have a dry erase board. I have lines, and then I have a plain dry erase board. I use this for writing, so a lot of the times I can have the student write on this, or I would write on it and have them copy on a loose leaf paper. So this is pretty self-explanatory. A dry erase board because they will be doing a lot of writing that we are in school so they'll be learning to write their name um, the dates um, just different word sentences for my little babies that are in kindergarten I use this side so I write the big A and then they can trace it or um, I have them write the big A or I would like have different different things just to help them to learn I identify their letters and whatnot so I feel like I'm more so like a second teacher. Like I give them that one-on-one -on -one attention that maybe when they're in the class full of the school students, they won't be able to get that attention. I mean, of course, next we have a folder. In this folder, I have like some dry erase assignments. So like this is like a square, circle, triangle. I'll have them trace it with the dry erase marker and then maybe color it in or maybe like, um, write something about it like oh how many sides does the square have like those kind of activities this is one of the other things that i would do i have their goals because they have something called an iep and that is their our way of tracking how much they are learning how much progression they're doing throughout the school year so i put all everyone's iep in this so i can always refer back to it and i printed it out um and just here's some other ones like some matching to like the numbers and then they would match it to the number of items like these are the kind of different things like little activities that i would do with them if i pull them out of class or sometimes i sit in with class and i help and i help them right then and there so that's another part of things that's in the back next we have construction paper i like to always keep some construction paper in my bag because you never know like sometimes like for free time i let them have a i do work with them for about our sessions are about 30 minutes so i do work with them for about 20 minutes and then takes time for us to clean up pack up whatever we're doing and then the, maybe the last five minutes i'll let them draw a picture or in my next thing that's in the bag i have scissors in here i would let them cut into whatever they want and whatnot so i always keep construction paper and if it's not construction paper some plain sheets because you these actually come in handy since this is already out I'll, I might as well so this is my pencil case so I have in this first pocket crayons and then in the next pocket I have my color pencils from our older kids color pencils and then 
I have some dry erase markers, like I said, for my dry erase board. So I have, always have a whole bunch of dry erase markers, eraser, pencil. Um, let me talk about this for a little bit. So these are scissors, but these are like a special kind of scissors. These are open, uh, can become open assist scissors. Open assist meaning this little part here, you can open it and it keeps the scissors open. So all the kids have to do is just squeeze and it opens up automatically for them. So this is one way to help my, my younger kids if they're not yet able to cut, that they can just push. All I gotta tell them is just push down and it works. And once they learn the master how to push, then I will be able to teach them how to open and then this won't be needed. Cutting scissors. And this is also safety scissors. So no sharp edges, really dull, and no injuries. Next we have, I like to keep the, this in my um, bag because it's really easy, especially for like kids with, um, with writing and learning how to identify different things. So it's really easy. So like this is slide. There's a picture of the bunny rabbit going down. And then on the back, I'll be like, okay, how do you spell slide? It's bigger, S-L-I-D-E. Things like that to help them. And like, there's a whole bunch, like, kick. Like, there's a whole bunch of these cards. And it's really fun, and they, and they enjoy the pictures. So they also can use context clues of the pictures to figure out and know, like, what is happening in the picture if they do not know how to read, which a lot of them don't know how to read yet. But I can also help them with learning their letters, identifying letters, um, like what letter is in the word. This word is big. What letters do you see? And spell it out and whatnot. So doing different things like that to help them is really good. So I, oh, this is really cool. Um, I was fortunate. I didn't buy this. I was fortunate that a teacher gave it to me when I first started. So this is clutch. Um, I can link this down below for any OTs or even any parents for learning how to, um, for teaching your kids some words, identifying letters, sounding out letters. Like this is really good. It's about a hundred cards. So there's that. And then of course my eraser for my dry erase board. Um, I learned very early to keep wipes in my bag. I Especially when I'm working with the markers, um, crayons, like they're messy. Kids are messy. So always having some wipes definitely saves me a lot, whether it was like they sneeze, wipe their nose, wiping hands, always having clean hands. Um, so yeah, wipes is clutch. Always keep wipes in your bag. That's one thing to keep. Um, what else is in here? Grippers. This is called a pencil gripper. Can I have a pencil? So this is a pencil gripper. It has the groove so that you can put your finger. I'm gonna put it on a pencil here so you guys can see. It's my pencil, you push it in. And here we go. So you see the grooves. Um, this is to use a three point, three jaw chuck, three point, three fingers. So, Thumb is right here, and next finger is in this groove right here, and you rest it on your ring, on your middle finger, just like so. And this is how they write, three points. And then these two just rest. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, a lot of kids, I'm not able to use this with them because they play with it. So, and a lot of kids don't like the groove, so they rather put their hands right here on top of it and write. So I just remove it all together if they're unable to do so and if they don't like it. But this is also really good for teaching students how to have a good grasp. Um, I can also link this down below for you guys. Pencil grips. Really good. Very clutch. Even if they may not like it, um, it's good to always introduce it to them every once in a while. Like, and that's what I do. So use it in one session. If they don't like it, don't use it in the next, but then bring it back again. Just so that they can, just until they're able to have that mature or able to have that graph that they're able to write effect effectively. All right, so next we have, I like to keep this in my bag. So I do deal with some nonverbal students. 
so this is a great way for me to communicate with them and have them communicate with me as well so I have of course hi and then how are you or I'm fine I have yes I need help I'm wants um, thank you like this is just a great way like bathroom for them to tell me that they need to use the bathroom like finish when you finish the session like these are different things that I use throughout the session and just help them um, I also have a color one as well I have a color one as well um, and a lot of them also have devices so if they do not so if I pull them out of class and they don't have their advice I can use this but their device also has a lot of these things and the common thing that they say for me to communicate with them and have them communicate back to me. So yeah, each of um, every student's device is catered and individualized for them for what their needs or what they like to do. Um, this is just very generic. So, I mean, based on what you want, like some it has no, some have, oh, I don't have yes on here. But I can be like yes or no, like different ways to communicate with them. Um, so yeah, this is really good to have. Next, I have these letters. This is lowercase. Uh, so it's just the whole alphabet. Oh, I is upside down. J. Ah, oh, he had them upside down. But yeah, basically, all my letters. F is upside down. H is upside down. Okay, boom. All my letters. And it's not picking up on camera. But these are like texture, like you can, like that. you can hear it. So what I'd like to do with this one is I would have them like place in front of them. They would trace it with their finger so they can feel it. And then I give them a pencil, give them a marker, and they do the same thing. So this is just different ways to help them learn. Cause some, some students, some people can be auditory learners, some are visual, some are like to do. So this is another way of modeling so they can feel it themselves. Um, just different type of learning styles, so this is one great way for the lowercase letters, and there's also capital letters, there's some for numbers as well, so this is really good as well to have around for your students, and for your babies, and for your kids, especially in like a playroom, um, a learning center in your house, different things, keep these at hand, it's really good. All right next, um, I have a couple of books, I like to keep at least two or three books in my bag, so I have the tiny dot. So like this is like a caterpillar turned into a butterfly, etc., etc. So we would read it. What's the story about? Find the butterfly. Find the caterpillar. What color is this? Um, how many wings does he have? What color flowers are there? Um, show me the leaves. Like different things, just for them to point things out for me. This is one, and this, this is another one. Hot sunny days. We're in June, about to be summertime, so really good. For my older students, I would have them like read a sentence, have them copy it because I know a lot of them, there are different goals. Whether it's copying correctly, size is an issue, um, alignment is an issue on the lines. Um, so just finding different ways to incorporate this book into helping their goals. That's what I would do. Oh, and I also keep stickers I keep a lot of stickers in my bag so that and these are my new sets that I got my other ones finished so I just started giving these out um, just to bribe them honestly I bribe my kids I bribe all my kids I'm like oh you want a sticker all right write this word for me like I gotta I gotta get I gotta get it how I get it and that's how I do it we're bribing them another way I bribe them kids love the iPad they love the iPad, love the iPad. Um, I would bribe them with a YouTube video. You can watch three minutes of your, of your favorite cartoon, fa three minutes of your favorite video on the iPad once you finish writing this for me, once you finish doing this for me. Um, I also have a couple of apps I can show you guys that are also good for parents. So let me clean this up. All right, so the app is called ABC Kids. And this is how it looks. So I would hit this, capital letters, they would do so. And then this is what they would do. They would just trace. And you could go through all alphabet, the whole entire alphabet, and then you can do lowercase and you can also do numbers. 
So wait for them to learn how to write them with their fingers first. And sometimes what I do is I get a stylus and the same thing, have a stylus, like they're holding the pencil and they would trace it as so. So that was another um, a, um, adaptation that I did for that. It's a good um, app. Another one I would recommend is Starfall. Where's Starfall? Starfall. This is how Starfall looks when you open it. I'll put a picture of what Starfall looks. And yeah, A, it would touch A, A. Goodbye. So this is a great way so like they would learn their letters, learn the sounds of the letters, um, writing the letters, um, there's also colors, colors as well. There's a whole bunch of different activities, there's videos for the students to learn. So this is a great way as well. Keep my iPad charged and on hand. Um, oh, my marker spilled. So like I said, I always keep instruction paper so I always have some markers in my bag. And yeah, I feel like that's about, oh no, one last thing. Um, I wouldn't be an OT if I didn't have at least one fidget or popper in my bag. So this is my fidget spinner. I keep this on hand and it has some poppers on it for them. So whenever they need a moment, give this to them. You get two minutes with this. Play, do whatever you want. Once we finish, go back to work. Or I would have them stand on the side, give me 10 jump jacks. Do whatever you need to do to get the sillies out. Um, for some, it's even just a walk. Let's go outside for a walk. We're going to walk around, and then we come back. Go go do a little bathroom break. Um, just doing different things like that just to help them to cope and get their sensory in order. Like, get whatever. If they're if they're overstimulated, if they're under-stimulated, to get them around. Like, doing different things to help them out. So my OT bag is empty. That's all the items that I have in my OT bag that while I'm at work, what I use to work with them. Um, I just want to say I love my job. It's great. I love to do YouTube as well. So I, I, great, I love that I can do both the things that I went to school for and the things I enjoy doing for fun. Um, although they're both means of income. So I'm not going to be upset about that. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions or any things that you have that you want me to elaborate on when it comes to like teaching students with handwriting, fine motor, um, anything academic, anything developmental, like anything, because I am a peds, occupational therapist. I may not only just do academics, I can do others as well. I can work with early intervention with babies less than, with babies from zero to three years old. Like I, I can do the full range. So if you guys have any questions, any um, information that you want for me to elaborate on to give you resources, how to help you guys, please feel free to do so. Reach out to me, DM me at so fine three E's, three underscores. You can um, comment under this video. I'll get back to you guys with that as well. Um, so yeah, once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys, stay cute and stay fine.